Um, I've never, I've never been a Foley artist um, professionally. I teach it. I teach Foley. Um, but no, I was always, I was, I was post-production. So I, I was, I was linked in with music a lot. So the kind of work that I did was creating sounds for objects that had no analog in the real world. Like what sound does a, 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 a chrome football spinning down a tube make? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sound in the real world because it doesn't exist, it's CGI. Um, and yeah, so on, on, on big action scenes, like you're watching Lethal Weapon 12 or something, uh -huh. and two guys are sitting behind a car talking about their feelings, you know, while there's explosions going on and mm. all that kind of stuff. Um, well, all of that would have been stripped out because the natural sound of that shoot would have been too loud to record clean dialogue. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have used the natural sound for the explosions and the cars blowing up. They would have used somebody like me designing it. So it's basically a mute and then we built up the sound over the top. But the overall concept is the directors. They, have a, they, they are at the helm. So your sound design must sort of conform to kind of the general style of the piece. If you're doing a sci-fi film and it's kind of it's sort of retro-futuristic, so it looks like 50s on mm. purpose, then you think, oh, well, I really need to create sound design, that sort of sound effects that feel kind of sort of 50s as well. So it's working within the style. So you talk to production designers, you talk to the director if you absolutely have to. Um, you talk to the cinematographer, um, basically sound, sound and cinematography and editors, they talk um, and they try and bully the director into doing what we want them to do. Your name? John. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, well, my name's Alan Smith and um, I'm a lighting cameraman. Um, I started uh, my career at Bournemouth College of Art, so I guess at your age, I was at Bournemouth doing film and television. That was three years, and um, then I was lucky to get a job at the BBC, uh, just like that. But it wasn't in the job that I wanted. I got a job as a film examiner in a film library, and I was stuck there for three years, but it was the same department as the department I really wanted to get into, which was the film department. So um, I got there within three years and was a trainee, trainee assistant film cameraman. And after a year you come out and you are an assistant, full assistant. And I was a full assistant for years, a long time, but I had a great time. So I did four years drama, four years documentaries. And then I started doing operating on things like Bergerac's and um, little dramas and then a lot of documentary. And that was all on film. And then in, in the 90s, tape came out, videotape, and all the cameramen didn't want to do that. So I volunteered, said, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, and got myself a job for four years on an arts programme called The Late Show. And that was how I learnt how to mess around with tape. Uh, nobody ever watched the programme, but hey, I didn't care, because it went out every night. So I was able to see what I'd shot, and that way you learn and then from there on I went through to the 2000 and uh, the department closed and so I ended up uh, going freelance. So I've been freelance ever since the last 13 years. Your duties as an assistant cameraman were to put the clapperboard on, uh, you'd change all the film, you'd reload because we had three magazines with 400 foot reels in and um, each magazine was um, 10 minutes long and it was mostly ne negative that we were shooting, colour neg. Uh, that was then my job to uh, log it and send the rushes to the labs at the end of the day to uh, have them processed. And overnight they'd be processed, they'd come back the next day and uh, somebody else in the department would check that the rushes were good, in focus, not scratched, etc. Um, so, and also basically you were carrying a lot of the kit, you were packing, you were basically the cameraman's assistant. You'd drive the car, you do an awful lot of things, but you wouldn't actually film very often. It... So, what would you say that you gained the most experience? Well, once, once, once you start operating, and once you start doing, obviously tape, we went down to a two-man 
uh, crew because on film it was three minimum, cameraman, sound recordist and um, assistant cameraman. Quite often we'd have a lighting man as well, so that's four. Then there'd be a director and a director's assistant. So quite often your minimum crew on a documentary would be five. And, um, but when we went to tape it became just cameraman and recordist. So there was one man missing, which was the assistant, which traditionally you then go into the, being a cameraman. So they didn't need so many assistants once tape had come out. So my most experience came from um, acting as a cameraman um, um, from the 90s onwards. I've worked on... Did you ever remember watching The Demon Headmaster? Right, okay, um, that was a kids' programme. Um, there was ka there was all sorts of kids' programmes I worked on. A lot of major dramas, Smiley People, um, Bleak House, um, Bergerac's, um, tons of documentaries, World About Us, just about everything really. I mean, so there's a lot of stuff. The best one I ever did, I think, was a film about Tchaikovsky, and it was in Russia. And uh, we used three tape cameras to do f the most fantastic effects. Of We put a camera under the tram wheels of one of the trams just to get some really nice stuff because the, the music from Tchaikovsky was run underneath these images that I was doing. So that was a really good one. But there's, there's too many. There's loads of really nice films. Uh, do you plan to work on any more stuff at yeah. the BBC? Uh, the BBC, I'm not that bothered about. Frankly, if, if you guys ever do want a job at the BBC, you'll be working for nothing initially, I warn you. Um, they are an amazing employer, but um, they don't really want to pay anybody. So at the moment, I would, I would deter you from working for them for nothing, unless you feel that that's fine and you can be supported. But you will be working for nothing for them. Um, I, I No, I work on my own films now. Um, I do my own. In fact, I've just been doing one last week. I've, that's, I've just come back from doing a little film on my own, which was hard work, I can tell you. Um, having to do the sound, do the camera, do the directing, and I'm trying to get a friend to do the editing because I don't know how to do that. So, um, yeah. Anything else? Have I got the job? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. He's still running. Yeah, we can stop. Oh, um, loads of stuff really. Uh, sometimes I'm inspired by watching another film. Like I may watch, uh, I may watch like a western or sci-fi or something. Oh, that's really good, but I think I could have done it better. And so I come up with an idea to actually make, you know, to kind of uh, use something which I thought was quite a good idea and put my own spin on it. Sometimes it's through my own life. Yeah. You, know, you have aspects of your own life. The best writers take elements of their own life or stuff that's happened to them in their life or stuff that's happened to their family or friends and you basically use that life experience and then fictionalise it to make it exciting. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes there's aspects of things that have happened to me and sometimes you kind of, rather than go out and get a gun and kill people, <laughs> you actually, you know, you actually... It happens to you. Yeah, you, you actually write about, you actually find a way to kind of get rid of all that kind of darkness that may be inside you or anger and you release it through writing, you know, that's that. Yeah, um, what skills do you feel that you have now that maybe someone my age would need in order to get into writing? Into writing. Yeah. Um, well, the key thing to remember with writing is there's no right or, right or wrong way to write something. There's a the correct way to format something, that's the skill you would need before wanting to write anything, you would need to learn how to format a script. What that means is the way a script is actually laid out on the page. The way the industry works is, if you was to send, say you have a great idea and you just write it out handwritten and you sent it to a producer or a director or a production company, a TV company, if they looked at it and it's not formatted correctly, it doesn't matter if it's the greatest idea in the world, they will throw it in the bin, they won't even look past page one. So the main skill to learn is how to format a script and then how to structure it. The actual content of a story, you know, whatever your story may be, there's no right or wrong answer for that because that's what you yourself want to put across, what you yourself want to say to the audience. And never let anyone tell you that you have to say certain things or have certain characters. 
It's about what you want and what you want to watch. If you write something and you like it, then there's going to be an audience out there which is going to like it as well. But the key thing which you would have to learn is formatting. Yeah. Everything else is like a painting. Some people, some people look at painting and go, that's brilliant. The next person will go, that's rubbish. Yeah. Okay. And that's the same with storytelling. The way I write it, I, I break everything down. Before I even start a screenplay or even a novel, is I break everything down into, I know exactly what's going to happen at the start, middle and end, I write character biographies, so I do loads of preparation. So even before I've written that first line, I know who all my characters are, I've asked myself questions about them, I know what scenes are going to follow what scenes. So yeah, you do loads of preparation. That's the way I write. Some writers don't write like that, other writers just actually sit down and go. It just depends on the person, doesn't it? Depends on the person. Yeah. That's the most important thing, anything creative which you're going to create, whether you want to get into directing or writing or camera work or whatever, never let anyone tell you there's a specific way to do stuff. The most important thing is do it the way you like to do it, what you feel most comfortable with, and then you'll be successful. And believe in yourself is the key thing. You've got to have belief in yourself because it is, as an industry, it's a real cutthroat industry. And there's loads of cowboys out there. Trust me. <laughs> I'm one of them. No, there's loads of cowboys out there. And you know, if you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything.